Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. I've been thinking about this series of videos for a really long time, and I've bought a lot of products to kind of um, research which works best, which works best which, which, with which papers, etc. But this is going to be the beginner's version of heat embossing. Now, what is heat embossing? First of all, Embossing is a term that crafters use for everything. Let's start with this. This is an embossing folder. You put this through your die cut machine with paper inside and it comes out with a raised image on it. Now I ran a little bit of ink over the top so you could see the raised image, but you can see it from here. You can see that it's deboss, which means it's pushed into the surface on this side. Embossed means it's raised on this side. That is an embossing folder, not what we're going to be talking about today. Next is this. This is a tool where you use a stencil of, of your choice. You take a, a stencil of your choice, in this case it's a brass stencil, and you're going to lay it on a foam pad, and this is a stylist. It has a bigger ball in one end and a smaller ball on the other end. And in this case, we're going to just do this little candy. You're going to go around the outside edges of the design a couple times. And I'm just going to do this very quickly, so if mine comes out poorly, remember, this is not what we're doing in the video. This is called dry embossing. And what it does is it allows you to create a design on your paper that, hopefully, we're going to flip it over. You take a little bit of ink. This is just for the purpose of the camera. You don't have to do this. And I'm just going to run it over that area so you can see that I created an embossed design on my paper. You, um, I didn't do the, the greatest job, but here's the candy, and here's the candy again raised. It's um, raised on this side, that's embossed, debossed on this side, which means it's sunk into the paper. So this is dry embossing. Again, not what we're talking about. But when people talk about embossing, they, they never are really clear on it. We're going to be talking today about heat embossing, and what heat embossing does is it gives you, uh, in this case I'm using, I used a metallic um, embossing powder. It gives you um, lovely, looks like a raised image, but really it's the powder that creates that and the ink, and it makes a really beautiful design. What tools do you need to do this? Well, that's when I got into a whole bunch of thinking. And when I start thinking, that means I start buying products to beat the band because I want to make sure that you guys know exactly what's available and what works and what doesn't work. So let me tell you about this first. The first thing you need to do is you need to treat your paper because when you use this powdery substance and this ink on here, the powder has a tendency to stick to anything that like, like your fingertip oil or anything on the paper, basically anything on the paper. So what you have to do is you have to wipe the paper off and I'm just going to put my paper here so you can see this. What I did was I took two nylons, well they were knee highs, and I put a little bit of cornstarch in the in the toe of them and I folded them up, knotted them really well and cut off the top and I made my own. I've been using this tool for two years and it works. It's completely free if you have the nylons and the cornstarch at home. You could also use baby powder. I suggest you consider trying this first before you buy something else just to see if you can make one that you like. Uh, you can sew a pouch. Okay, let me talk about the second version. This is from Recollections. My friend Nancy bought it for me. It's called an anti-static bag. You buy it at Michael's because Recollections is a Michael's brand. It's $7.49 full price, but if you use a coupon there, you'll, you'll be able to get it much less expensively. But this is full of, it feels like cornstarch too. And again, all you would do is you rub it on your paper. And I'll show you that 
when I get to that point. But I want to go through this first. This is something that you'd be able to do with muslin, but I would sew it like you would a little pillow and put a little bit of cornstarch in, sew the end shut, and you've got yourself a pouch. That's another way to make one. Um, I don't sew, so clearly this was my system. It's not pretty, but it worked. This would be much prettier. You can also buy it at, at, Rec at Michael's, so that's another option. This is, we'll call the biggest version. It's called an EK Success Powder Tool Applicator, and it uh, works the same way. The only difference is, is that you just lightly rub it over with the little brush. Now, this one, I'm sure, has baby powder in it because you can really smell baby powder or something that smells like baby powder and you just rub it over your surface like that. I have not been confident when using this that I'm actually getting anything on the surface because um, it just doesn't seem like it comes out for me but I don't know if I'm pushing too hard on the brush I don't know but we'll go into that in more detail when we get to um, using these. Then last but not least Inka Dinka Do makes an embossing magic which is very similar to this pouch. You can buy that at Amazon for $5.28. Now the reason I give you prices isn't because I want you to buy the things from the places I tell you. I'm just giving you price comparisons. I looked online and found them. One other note, if you've never watched my videos, I write everything below the video in the more information section. If you click on that it, where it says um, more information, you'll read everything. Every tool I use, every process I use, and if I'm making a card, I write step by step exactly what I've done. And the reason I do that is because I have hearing impaired viewers and our closed captioning is not that great on YouTube and I wanted to make sure that if you had any kind of physical limitations, almost every type of physical limitation, that you would be able to watch my videos, read the information if you needed to, and be able to use the tools that I explain and do the processes and that's why I write that. I want to make sure almost everybody can use my channel. So with that let's talk about the next thing that you need. Now you only need one of these tools. I just want to be clear on that and you'll want the one that works best for you. I would go with something that's free or as inexpensive as possible. One other thing you could do is you could take cornstarch and put it in a little container. Let's say that you have something like this at home that has a lid on it. You could keep cornstarch in that and you could have a brush and you could just dip into that and just brush it over the surface. That would work too as long as your brush is clean. Speaking of brushes, you are going to need a brush that I like a little brush that's angled and has soft bristles. This works best for me when you're brushing off stray pieces of powder. And again, I'll talk about that when I get to that section. So the first thing you need to do is clean your paper. Use the pouch and you're just going to go across your paper like this. Now if you're only going to use, if you're only going to stamp a sentiment right here, you only need to do it right there. It's only where you're going to be applying the ink and the ink is our next step. When I started doing this research, I wanted to make sure I bought every ink that was out there to try them all out. I'm going to start with these two and I'm going to actually show these in action for you so we can completely eliminate them from the mix. One of them is called the Ink It Up Embossing Pad, which is this one. This is from Hampton Arts. It's called a Tinted Embossing Pad, and it will leave a color behind so you can see it. Most embossing inks are clear, so you can't see them. And when you put them down, that can be problematic for a lot of people because you really can't see what you've stamped. And it's frustrating because you're like, where is it? Is it there or is it here? So this Hampton Arts came up with this, which I thought was a great idea until I used it. Now let's talk about making, let's, let's, how we're going to eliminate these right off the bat and the way we're going to do that is I'm going to stamp a little, a little flower and a sentiment with both of these on our paper 
if you didn't see the prices, the Ink It Up is $3.27 at Amazon, and the Hampton Arts was $6.99 at Joann's. If I give you a price, it's always the full price. It's not a sale price because I want to make sure that if you go to those sites and you see a price, you're going to wait. Sandy said it was $3. I go for the highest price so you can use a coupon on it and get a lower price. So that's where I'm coming from with that. And I'm going to use, um, wait, I'm going to reuse, I'll just use my little pad on this paper and I'm going to do it in both places we're just going to I'm going to do in one column will be the sentiment and in the other is going to be the flower I'm giving it a chance to um, end up on the paper and the problem I had with this one I'll be honest with you is it was dry I'm trying to see if you can see it at all I think you can see it I'm going to do it again and I'm going to stamp it several more times like uh, I'm going to do this several times just to make sure that you know that I really really ink this well because I don't like to say a product doesn't work for me unless I show you that I've really tried to make it work so let's do it one more time I'm going to do it further up this way and in the reverse and we'll be sh it should have I'm inking on it that time. I'm pretty sure it did. Okay. Before I go to the next, um, the, the Hampton Arts, I'm going to put down some powder. Now, this is one of my favorites. It's from Ranger. It's called Princess Gold, and it works really well, and I like the end result. It's a metallic, and it makes it so that you can really um, get a good impression and it doesn't seem to have a ton of strays left behind. After you've, you're have you sure you've gotten it covered on your background, you're going to put your bottle under it and take a scrap paper put under it. You can see this was the first image, this is the second one. The first image doesn't have very much, um, it, it doesn't have good coverage, but that's okay. I'm not going to heat set this until I do the Hampton Arts because it, the, it can sit, once it has the powder on it, it can sit there for a minute. Now again, the Hampton Arts I'm going to clean this off. The Hampton Arts has um, a blue color to it. Oh, let me show you this too. This is one of those bottles that you, um, when you go to the doctor's office, it usually has like alcohol in it and it has a pump on the top. You can get this at the Dollar Tree in the nail section or if you buy things online on eBay or AliExpress or any of those sites. Ten parts water to one part baby shampoo and that does a really nice job of cleaning my stamps and it's really um, mild because of the baby shampoo. So I'm just going to clean my stamp so you see that it's clean. And then I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to take my powder and rub it down here where I'm sure it's dry. Just so we don't have any problems with that. Okay, now we're going to have, this is our Hampton Arts. Again, it's going to be blue and I want to make sure we get a really good impression. Yesterday when I did this, I struggled getting good impressions with both of these. I'm going to do the sentiment again because I don't see the whole you're the best. I'll just do the whole thing over again just to make sure. I want to make sure that this is a fair test on these because if, you, if I tell you don't buy these and here's why, I want to make sure you know why. That's a much better impression. Okay. Always close your pads before you put the powder down because the powder will blow around and you'll not be happy with that. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is put a little powder on it. You can dump the whole bottle of powder on it if you want. It's just a matter of making sure that you cover your image. And I'm going to, again, put it right over here. You can you can put use the scrap paper instead and then take your bottle See how I have more powder on the scrap paper and then clean it off that way. Okay. The next tool that you need when you're heat embossing is a heat tool. So I'm going to talk about that really shortly. 
the three that most crafters use are the Ranger Heat Heat It craft tool. I found it for 1957 on Amazon. It looks like a blow dryer more than anything else. It looks like a blow dryer. I've never used it, but some crafters do use it on YouTube. The Derice heat tool, which was when I first started crafting, this was really inexpensive. It was $24.99 at Joann's full price, so I think I paid like $12 for it, maybe even less. And it's worked for me for years. Now, on the comment section, it said people had tried it and it had died on them right away well it didn't work that way for me I still got it It still works the thing I like about it is this plastic tip Ranger also has plastic here these will get so much hotter than your hair dryer it's unbelievable you want to really think about this when you're buying one of these because a lot of crafters use the hero arts it's $45.99 it is the king of these it's super powerful but the tip of it, I don't know if you can see inside there, the tip inside there is metal. On the Hero Arts, that metal is completely exposed to your hands. So if you would have heat set your embossing powder, you could have touched it on your hand, you could have burned yourself. If a, if a child walks by and touches it, they could burn themselves. I really think that that's a tool for somebody who's a lot more adept at using tools than I am because I know I would burn myself with it. If you've ever burned yourself with a hot hot glue gun, consider that uh, a mild warning compared to what this could do to you. So with that being said, those are the three that most crafters use. So it's something you need to consider if you're going to do this because in the end you're going to need um, the pouch or or the bottle you're going to need this or the pouch inks and powders and the tool and a small brush so you're going to it's not just one thing you need you need a few things but I'm going to show you ways that you're going to be able to buy those less expensively and um, get more bang for your buck so let's heat these up first thing you have to know is you're going to pre-warm your tool five to ten seconds this will help you to make sure that you don't burn your paper that you don't put it on there too long that it's ready to go when it's time to use it okay then you're going to kind of wave it back and forth over your image you'll know your image is done when it changes from powdery looking to metallic looking once it gets hotter and it's been on for longer it will um, change it to metallic much much faster let's talk about how these work now um, this is the best image I've gotten with it, with these two brands since I tried it I really struggled with these yesterday if you can see here where the U hopefully you can see that where the U doesn't have a lot of embossing powder so it's not as consistent and it um, it has spots like in this flower where it's not consistent. I just want to make sure that before I recommend a product to you that I've really thought it through and I really can't recommend either of these products because I just don't feel they give you the best result. With that being said, I have four other choices of inks for you and they are Tim Holtz, this is the, the Distress Embossing Ink uh, it comes in the regular size, which is $5.99 Joann's, or the mini. This is the one time I would tell you probably don't get the mini because the mini, you, you know, like if you wanted to emboss a, a big background, you'd have to be really using up a lot of ink. So I would probably say this is the one time that I would tell you get the bigger one. And um, again, these are full price, so you'd be able to get it around $3 on sale or with a coupon. Then Versamark is basically the go-to for all crafters. It's $9.49 at Michael's. Again, you'd use a coupon, but it's, um, it's a good um, embossing ink. Then Ranger, which is another Tim Holtz product, makes a, a product called Emboss It. It's uh, clear as, as the other. $5.75 at Amazon. You can buy it at all the other stores as well. And then this one's a little bit unusual. It's from Stampendous, and it's got a dauber top on it. So you just daub onto your uh, stamp, and you 
get an image. Now let's say you missed a little spot and you want to um, use a marker to fill in the spot you missed. Well, Versamark makes a Versamarker and Joann's it's $3.49 cents full price and it looks like this it's got a small tip and a big tip so if you wanted to just use this on your let's say you wanted to just go across your um, your sentiment with a, just a marker instead of getting out your ink pad it would work for that or for filling in a little boo-boo like on on this one like if you wanted to fix a, a part of your flower you would be able to put in a little bit of filler with it Tim Holtz also makes a two-pack of markers called ink essentials. They're embossed pens. Uh, there's a black and a clear. My black was dry when I opened it, so I'm not really thrilled with these. Six dollars and forty nine cents for the pair, full price at Joann's. So um, that this is another marker option. You can also buy a full range of colors of markers that are embossing markers. And Marvy makes them. I'm not sure of any of other people, but you can buy you know a bunch of colors instead of buying a bunch of powders you'd be able to um, buy that. But I'm not going to tell you to buy a lot of colors and I'm going to show you the reasons for that in a second. So those all four have worked perfectly fine for me of the inks. Now the markers, we're going to just we're not going to really use those. We're just talking about them as a product that's out there. Um, as far as everything else goes, these are the four that I all were very consistent. I'll show you some of the things that I uh, embossed with them. I did this in white embossing, and you can see uh, this is the distress. Oh, here you can see the difference with the Ink It Up, how it's kind of um, not as strong. The Hampton Arts, also not as strong. The Ranger Embossit, the Versamark, and the Stampendous Dauber. All of them, I think, did a pretty good job. You can see these two in the center are the weakest, or the Ink It Up and the Hampton Arts. These two right here. They're just kind of not as good of an impression. And when you take the time to emboss, you are not going to want to have that happen to you. Black is by far the hardest embossing powder to use. So I want to talk about embossing powders next. Get these out of the way. Embossing powders come in a variety of types. Now um, I prefer, I really like the Ranger embossing powders. I do have some others and I bought a big Ranger, well I fil filled this um, with my ranger. If you live in a climate where you have a lot of humidity, like down south, you probably would want to consider not decanting into another container because your embossing powders can go bad and will if they're exposed to too much of the elements. This has a really good screw on lid and I live in the north where it's cold most of the year so I don't have the problem with that like you can but I um, oh and I have a little medicine cup that I use for clear clear embossing powder is the one that I use the most and I'll explain that in a second black detail detail embossing powder is made for those very fine lines the little detail lines that you would have on a project uh, I don't recommend black at all I own it but it's a mistake and I'm sorry I own it because I can never get all of the little stray pieces of black powder off and I always end up with a little spot here and there of black that I didn't want. So um, black isn't the greatest but um, a bottle this size is $4.99 at Joann's. Then um, you can get a standard embossing powder which looks like this. It just says embossing powder and then it gives you the color. Um, this was $4.99 at Blitzy, but it was also $4.99 at Joann's. I just wanted to give you different places that you can buy it. And Blitzy is online. And then I wanted to try the uh, Deep Impression Super Chunky. Uh, this is an embossing enamel. This was at Joann's was $6.49. This is going to be more for mixed media or for doing something that looks molten or um, like on the back of an envelope if you wanted to make it look like you had a wax seal you would use it for you'd use this for something like that we're going to use these in upcoming videos I'm going to do videos on techniques in, in about embossing this video is simply about 
the how to to get started in heat embossing. So then um, clear obviously is the one that you'd want. In life, what I will tell you is you'll probably use clear and I I get some I have fine clear. I also got this. I don't even know where I ended up getting this from, but um, someone else had it I think and I got it as part of a thing on eBay, but it was 15.95 and 100 years ago cuz look how old that is. But anyway, uh, that's called bead embossing powder. I don't know what it I think it must beat up. But anyway, a lot of people when they get started think I've got to buy every embossing powder out there. It's a really big thing. You, you want to go, oh, I, like for me, Stampin' Up! comes out with a color that I absolutely love, and this was Melon Mambo. And I said, oh, I, I'm going to get that embossing powder in that color. Well, this was when I first started, or when in the early stages of me doing embossing, and I really wanted to make sure that I had something that would work well, and this does work well. But what you have to remember is if you want a color, you can make a color just by stamping it. So this is my Melon Mambo stamp pad. If you have a stamp positioning tool like a Misty, what you want to do is you would want to lay your stamp where you want it. I'm just going to use that same little stamp. And <clears throat> they, you can buy... Um, Tim Holtz makes a stamp positioning tool like this. Um, there are other ones on the market, but I want to make sure you know that this is an option for you. If you're going to be buying different colors of embossing powder, I want to show you how to avoid doing that. So we're going to take our embossing powder, and that's going to be, we're going to do that first. We're going to wipe our surface. And then we're going to use our Versamark because we're going to be doing we're going to be using our um, Melon Mambo on this, our embossing powder that we just got out. I want to make sure you can see that, or I can see that. I'm going to do it again because I don't, I can't see it very well in this lighting. And because I have all these light sources, it really dries us out fast. Okay, so I'm going to do the Melon Mambo powder on it. I have plastic inside my Misty because I make such a mess that so I can, if I wanted to, I can just um, take that off. Then I'm going to show you the brush and why you use the brush. When you do powders like this, oftentimes you'll get little strays. I don't know if you can see that little line right there. But you take your brush and you just kind of go in the area that you need to take off a line or a mark or a boo boo and just tap it. Then you're going to take this and either blow on it or tap the back. I'm going to heat set that because I want to make sure that you can see how this differs from the other method that is the one I prefer. Okay, that was with embossing powder. Our next step is we're going to ink this up with the Melon Mambo ink. Keep in mind, we're looking to see the difference between if you own the the um, embossing powder in Melon Mambo versus you don't own it. And don't worry about the ink I'm getting everywhere. That's just the way I roll. Okay. So we're just going to put that on there, make sure it's well inked. And the other thing is, is if you... Um, if you want this to be a little bit stronger color, you can go back with the Misty or the stamp positioner that you're using and just ink it up a second time. And then that way, you'll get a darker image that looks more professional. I always do that with sentiments because I like it that way. Okay, so we've done that. Now I'm just going to wipe off my stamp because I want to make sure it's clean. So I'm going to put the Melon Mambo, or excuse me, the embossing ink right on that stamp and I'm going to stamp down like that. This time I'm going to use clear because I already have the color I need. All I need is to make it look um, embossed, which means shiny and raised. Take my little medicine cup and just kind of go over that. 
Good. Then we're going to turn on the heat tool. That's Melon Mambo with uh, clear embossing powder. It's a little bit shinier, I think, than Melon Mambo when you use the actual Melon Mambo um, powder, but um, it's the same color. It looks exactly the same. So the reason I wanted to do that with you is because when you go out to buy your powders, it's going to be really tempting to buy all these really pretty colors. But I would tell you that if you buy any kind of stamp positioner, and they they make really inexpensive ones called a stamp a majig that helps you to put a stamp in the in the same spot every time. You can you can basically you can basically use a CD case to do it. But um, if you wanted to make your um, embossing powders go go further for you, what I would recommend is the these colors. Wait, first of all, let me tell you one more about black. If I was going to buy one black ink to do embossing with, I would buy, it's called Versafine Onyx Black. This is not the container it comes in. The container it comes in, the lid flaps around, and it always kept getting black ink on me. And I didn't like that. So what I did was one of my viewers said, Cindy, why don't you buy one of these empty Tim Holtz Distress Ink containers has nothing no ink in it it just has the pad and put your use your reinker for versifying onyx black and do that so i put it in here and i love it it's so much better it works so much easier for me and um i have to say it's one of those aha moments where you say to yourself oh that's so much better i just love it and um so i really recommend that again we're going to use the black the thing that you have to remember about Versafine Onyx Black is it's a pigment ink. Pigment inks stay wetter than other inks. You could, I could have tried when I did the the Mambo, Melon Mambo, I could have tried to put the powder on the Melon Mambo layer first if I did it really fast. But dye inks dry really, really quickly. I'm going to do one more layer of this. And so when they dry quickly, the problem is, is that you end up not being able to get your powder to stick. The great thing about Versafine Onyx Black is it's a pigment ink, which means it doesn't dry quickly. And so you just go from uh, stamping, you go right to the powder. Your powder should stay on it, and it did. See that? And then we're just going to turn our heat set on, heat tool. And there you go. That is Versafine Onyx Black. It's a really dark black ink. I still had some pink in my stamp. I didn't clean it really well, which was my mistake. But um, the Versafine Onyx Black does a really, really great job of um, making sure that you've got a good impression. And it's the only tool you need. You don't need another. You don't need any more ink. All you need is your powder. So um, my recommendation when you're buying powders is this. When you buy your clear embossing powder, you might want to buy a clear regular and a clear fine, but clear doesn't really, I, I don't think you have as big of an issue with the detail as you do with other colors. So maybe you start with just your basic clear embossing powder, and then the other recommendation I have are metallics. I really like the Ranger Princess Gold Metallic, and they have a silver and a platinum they're just gorgeous. I just bought a new one in just plain gold. And I bought a silver pearl. I wanted, um, I really like the metallics in embossing powders, and I think you will too. Uh, and you can't, you you can buy ink pads that have um, a metallic in them, but they're not as good as, the, you don't have the same results, I don't think. To recap, Let's talk about what you definitely need to have to do this. If you want to do heat embossing, you're going to need a, one of these tools that will be anti-static, either homemade or purchased. You'll need one of these. Then you'll need a brush of some kind to brush away the strays. You can use your fingertip, but a brush will get into those little nooks and crannies. And you could, this is a very inexpensive one I got with a big bunch of cheap ones at Walmart, so it's you know not an expensive brush. You're going to need one of the inks. Um, any, any of these will work. I've tested them all, but um, 
Versamark is the one that most people buy, so if you want to go with that one, you can. I am going to be doing videos going forward that's going to show you in more detail on different papers and um, different inks to see which ones work better on which papers, etc. So I am going to be doing more technique and what works better videos. Then you're going, and I also forgot the dauber, that one worked well. You're going to need powders. I recommend you getting a clear for sure, the big Mac Daddy bottle. Uh, you don't have to get that. I would get a very small bottle like these to start. They will last forever. And um, you would maybe want a white if you're going to be using colored papers and then um, a metallic or two metallics, whatever you choose. You'll need a power tool and you cannot use your hair dryer as much as we all have wanted to. You can't use your hair dryer. It won't melt everything. And that in a nutshell is what you need. One of each of these. I really hope that this helped you to understand heat embossing a little bit better and that it gave you some ideas about how you can do it less expensively and um, get more bang for the buck that you already have put into your inks, etc. And I hope that you'll give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.